We had a brick and mortar art gallery and art studio space in Seattle, Washington. We have 6,000 square feet. We have 36, 39 artists, kind of fluctuates. By the way, we're all over 50 and we are now closed. really kind of on the front end of when our governor recommended that we do a stay at home because of our age. And I always like to err on the side of caution and just trying to be a community leader and set an example of the right thing to do. My responsibility is to those artists that are in there, those folk artists. And every day, that's my motivation. I don't think anybody really predicted the severity that it is, but I did see it coming and started making a shift at the very beginning of March, end of February. I created an online store and started building that. So I was putting everything that was in my gallery on our website, just setting that up and making sure that I had that in place. And boy, am I glad I did. Frankly, we're not having a lot of sales. We're just not. People are afraid to spend money and I get that. But if we can at least keep our community engaged and keep our art patrons and fans know that we're still around and relevant, then I also started making videos the week after we closed and posted them on YouTube and on social media of some of our exhibits and just talking about art and just doing some fun things with some social distancing with a couple of our artists. I don't love making YouTube videos. In a way, it's really expedited and pushed me to do things that I should have already been doing, like a YouTube channel, like making more videos. It's weirdly a blessing in a way like a lot of businesses are doing, there is the opportunity to develop an online presence. It's not expensive. It's a learning curve for people, but it's really not that hard. Create an Etsy store, create an eBay store, do an Instagram store, do an online store, do them all. I have set up my business so that I can survive for a while. And my landlord's been great. And I also got a, a grant. So I applied for a grant through Artist Trust and we got a thousand dollar grant from them. So if there's artists that can't pay their membership fee or can't pay their studio rent, I have money for them so that we can all remain there and keep the doors open when we can and um, still be an entity and keep our building. I think it's more personal for me. I was a single mom. I supported my daughter on my own when the economy crashed and I lost my house. So I had a lot of ups and downs. And I had to really think on my feet and really rally and think out of the box and take care of us. I think it's just accumulation of all of those things of just tenacity and um, stubbornness. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I will not fail. This will work, it's too important to fail. We only have one artist, David Johansson, um, is really regularly using his studio and he is doing a phenomenal job in our community by all of the buildings that are boarded up in Georgetown, he's painting murals. We gave him a little grant and, and the Georgetown Merchants Association gave him a grant and also our, our landlord gave him a small grant. He's not getting paid much. So he's really taking his own time and doing a great thing for our community. And I'm super proud that he's a foe. Uh, hey, I put in a world up here. You are, we are the world. We are the world. Who are you? I was thinking, I'm Dave Johansson with Faux Studios right Gallery. On. We have a really strong arts community in Georgetown. So it's really showing the sense of unity and community. And it's really cool. I have a responsibility to the artists that are in my gallery and trust me with their art to represent it and make sure that people still see it. We're all in this together. This is a time to really take care of one, one another.